Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Hello. I, I have Miss Teresa with us, and she is a 26 year old wife, stepmama, author, and business owner coming in from California. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Executive Director of Happy Go Lucas, a coaching and organization business focused on helping millennials find and maintain a balance in their lives. In March 2020, she released her first book with these words, a poetic memoir of love, loss, and self-discovery. She has a bachelor's degree in child, adult, and family services from Iowa State University, and at the age of 20, went on to earn her master's degree in post-secondary administration and student affairs at 21 from the University of Southern California. Prior to working for herself, Teresa works as a higher education edu administrator at a few different universities within the U.S. After getting divorced from her first husband after only one year of marriage, she realized how much of her depression and anxiety was impacting her ability to be successful. She began to become more vocal and transparent about being a young Black woman living with major depressive disorder, anxiety, and PTSD. As she shared her story with other millennials, she began to see how empowering it could be. Today, Teresa is proud of her story and is a strong advocate for taking care of your mental health and practicing self-care. In her free time, she enjoys working out, coloring, being in the water, and spending time with family. Welcome to the podcast, love. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Absolutely. I definitely resonate with your story in a couple of different ways. So I've dealt with depression for as long as I can remember. Um, I've had issues with suicide um, and grief is definitely something I've struggled with for the past couple of years. Um, but one of the things that um, I also resonate with is coloring. I actually yes. love coloring it's such a spirit of peace yes um, it like, feels so good okay um i discovered I, well, I rediscovered the joy of coloring um when i was surviving the grief of my miscarriage um mm -hmm. that was just one of the things that just gave me an escape like i mm -hmm. it, i just was i don't know the peace that came and i was just like yeah wow. and so even though things are a lot better now every once in a while i still find myself like Let's just color. Let's just color. Yeah, it feels so good to color. And now I have a coloring app. So I'll do it on my phone or my iPad. And I love There's it. Literally an app for everything. An app for everything. Everything. <laughs> Absolutely. So I like to start off the conversation by asking, what was the dream for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the dream for me has always just been to help people. And I never really had a a specific target of own my own business or write a book or whatever. Um, probably the dream to be a published author was big for me ever since I was a little girl, but I always wanted to be a published author and I wanted to help someone. The way I would write it in my journals is like save someone's life. Mm. Um, and that was really important to me. I didn't know what the vision would be for it. I didn't know what it would look like or how it would come about, but as time went on, I was like, okay, I'm helping people each day. Like I've already accomplished that dream and, and how can I help more people? And that's how Happy Go Lucas came about. Yes, yes. So when did you realize the dream um, and how has it changed over the years? Oh, I would say I realized the dream probably around the time I lost my uncle. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I was about 10. Mm -hmm. And that was also about the same time I had the dream of being a published author because it's when you're in elementary school and you're doing those like class wide books and like, here, we're going to make a book. And I was like, Ooh, I want to do that. Yeah. Um, but I had no idea what I wanted to write about. And so, um, as I lost my uncle and dealt with that or didn't deal with that grieving process, um, I realized I wasn't the only one, but I had no words for it. I had no way to ask people like, hey, are you okay? Or like, what are you going through? I just knew other people were dealing with it. And so as I grew older and saw more and more people struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts and anxiety and eating disorders, I was like, who's helping them? <laughs> like, yeah. why are we not talking about this? Um, and then I went into a career with student athletes um, and I was helping them through those issues. And I was like, okay, 
the more that I follow my passion, the more I'll be fulfilled and the more I'll be in my purpose with God. And so kept doing it, kept doing it. And then I was like, I'm just going to go out on my own and do it. Yes. You and I, um, as we're discussing, I'm like, we have so many similarities. (laughs) I literally have a book from that was published um, yes. from our sixth grade class yes. and it's still in my mama house somewhere. yes mine is too like, oh my goodness who knew um and that's the thing about our purposes they always leave breadcrumbs yep there yep. if you look back you can see it yeah. yeah we just have to be intentional about finding those breadcrumbs yeah. and like okay where does yeah. where is this where, where is it <laughs> where are we going <laughs> yep exactly so exactly. we're here to talk about mental health Um, And I want to start the conversation by just asking, how do you define mental health? Oh, um, that's a good question for me today because I feel like it changes. Yeah. Um, It it takes me a lot of intention to, to talk about mental health and mental illness separately. Mm. Um, Usually I just think about it all as one. I'm like mental health. Okay. I'm working on my mental health, but really I'm like, okay, but today I'm struggling with my mental illness. Mm. Um, so to me, mental health is being, um, feeling full. It's feeling, feeling like you can handle the day. It's feeling like, you know, that even if today's a hard day, tomorrow will be okay. Yeah. Um, and just kind of doing that every single day. Um, but it's super important for me to realize that mental health is an overall and not like a right this minute. I think yeah. that's, that's, if you recognize that you can say you're mentally healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And I I remember hearing someone say something that really stuck with me. Um, They they said, just like physical health is something we view that everybody has. Mm -hmm. Everyone has mental health. Everybody. The question is, where in your scale are you in that moment? Yeah. Um, And I like what you said about understanding that just because you're not okay right now. Yeah. Doesn't mean you need to go check into a hospital. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you're in allowing ourselves to not be okay. Yeah. Because it's you don't have to be okay all the time. That's absolutely not realistic at all. <laughs> but I think that's the thing is everyone has physical health and we talk about financial health. We talk about yeah. physical health. Yeah. We talk about spiritual health. But as soon as we say mental health, people think <laughs> mental Ooh. illness. Yeah. And it's like, those are two different things. Like you went for a walk today so that your heart could be healthy. Like, why don't you journal for a little bit or meditate or yeah. color or do something so that your mental is also healthy. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that I love when I'm, when I'm talking about mental health is distinguishing our response to mental illness. Yeah. And the reality is if you started bleeding out of nowhere yeah. and you had no idea why, you would go see a professional. Yeah, for sure. If you were hurt, physically yeah. hurt, you would go to the emergency room. Yeah. Why is it that if you cry out of nowhere and can't figure out why, why don't we go to a professional? Yeah. If, you know, if, and like you said, if you went for a walk because you want to keep your heart healthy. Yeah. Why can't you journal to keep your mind healthy? Yes. Do something for your whole body. I'm all about holistic wellness. I'm like, I'm not saying let's just do mental health. Like, let's do the whole picture. picture. (laughs) Absolutely. And I I recently had this conversation uh, with my pastor, and I was like, you know, I have a therapist and a pastor. Like, I need both. Like, I can have both. I can do both. And it's, it's a matter of making sure. And then on top of that, I journal every day. Um, I am intentional with taking rest days. I'm very intentional with my self-care, especially knowing my history with mental yeah. health. I know it, it. grief can come and go just by snapping its finger. Yeah. Um, and then also recognizing that it's easy for me to slip into depression. So I have to do what I need to do to make sure mm-hmm. that I'm whole. Yes. And and that's a day by day scenario. Yeah, hundred percent for sure. So, what are some triggers we look for when we're evaluating our mental health? Oh, that's a great question. I would say for each person, obviously, it's going to be different. Like you said, you can slip into depression easily. Other people, it might be panic attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, But being able to know your body, and I think overall, that's the most important thing that I tell any of my clients is just to know where your normal is. And if you deviate from that normal, make sure there's someone in your life 
mm-hmm. who can call you out on it if you yeah. haven't. Like for me, it's my husband. He's like, hey, today's not a good day for you. What should we do about it? Mm-hmm. Um, and so like for, for my mental health triggers, I've noticed if I'm in a, a super messy space, it triggers my anxiety. And if I don't get it fixed, it triggers my depression. So it's, it's just a little downward spiral. So I know there's a lot of people who are able to kind of notice what's wrong, but not notice how it affects them. So I think learning your triggers in combination with how you can fix your triggers and how you can um, truly deal with them in a reasonable way is super, super important. Absolutely. And it's definitely one of those things where because our triggers are so individualistic mm-hmm. you have to spend time with yourself yeah to even notice what those triggers are yeah um, for example I know for me a lot of my triggers are interpersonal relationships mm-hmm. whether that's friendships family or romantic mm-hmm. and finances mm-hmm. if my money acting up I'm going to have some problems coming up. Um, And, you know, just being mindful of that. So financial, not necessarily problems, but financial stress. Yeah. um, Is a huge trigger for me. But then also grief. Yeah. Grief is like more recently, I've been struggling um, with depression a little bit, but it started with Mother's Day and Mm -hmm. how difficult that was from a grieving stance. And then even after grief passed, then yeah. it's built into depression. So yeah. really being able to be in tune with yourself and yeah. also understand um, when you're not okay. And even if no one notices, like one of the challenges that I've had to do um, for the past week or so is self-advocate. Oh yeah. Because I know that- tell somebody. Exactly. There's people who care, yeah. but they don't know to check in. Because yeah. everybody has their respective lives, right? Yeah. So if no one knows something's going on, it's up to me to, at a minimum, say, I'm not okay. 100%. And we talk. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's part of knowing who you are and, and building your support system is mm-hmm. making sure you have, you know, three or four friends you can text or you can call at any time. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter. And just say, I'm not okay. Can we talk? Yeah. Or say, can we talk? And that's, that's how the two of you know, like, okay, this is a moment where, she really needs me and I'm going to put down what I'm doing and I'm going to help her. Yeah. And that's one area that I've definitely been working more at because mental illness will convince you, well, no one cares. No one checks in. No one noticed I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. And And putting your pride aside to say, okay, people have lives. People have lives. People People don't see you 24 seven. People don't know what you're going through. Exactly. But the moment I communicate that I'm in need, people Mm -hmm. show up. Yeah. And, and that's, that, the, that's the place where so many of us get stuck is just not asking for help. And the longer you don't ask for help, the more you feel like you're alone and the more you feel like no one cares. But it's, in reality, you haven't told anyone. Exactly. And it's like, just take that, take that step and send, even if it's a text, just send a text and say, I'm not okay. Someone yeah. will call you back. Yeah. And if sure. not, then call me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, like give people the opportunity to show up for you. Yeah. If you yeah. suffer in silence, you're already canceling out their chance to yeah. show up. Um, and I get not everybody's going to show up. Cool. But if yeah. you've never even asked, you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Don't know. And if you don't have anyone in your life who's going to show up for you, then your mental health and your holistic health is not at 100%. And we should talk about that. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> so what are some strategies we can implement in order to have a more balanced mental health? Mm, I think most important is learning how to be alone, learning um, exactly who we are. And it is not an easy process. It is not a short process. But the, the most important thing is learning how to be alone. Um, and right now it's hard because the world is still reopening and it's dangerous to go outside. So it's not like I'm telling my clients to go sit down at a restaurant yeah. by themselves. But even if it's just you take the time to turn off your phone for four hours and you just sit there with your thoughts, and you meditate, and you journal, um, and just see what comes out. You know, I, I call it word vomit. Like, just put yeah. down everything on the on the piece of paper, and then in an hour, go back and look at it, and see what themes are coming up, see what's going on in your life. Um, being able to really learn who you are, and what makes you tick, and what annoys you, and how you can deal with those things, that's going to be the best setup to have a, a health mental health. Absolutely. And I remember um, 
a couple of years ago when I was living, uh, still living in Maryland and, you know, close to family and all that fun mm-hmm. stuff. And um, I checked into a hotel for the weekend. Oh. And I remember my father asking, he was like, but you live alone. Like, what? <laughs> Doesn't What's matter. The point? And I was like, I need to spend a weekend where no one knows how to find me. Yeah. Yeah. Where no one else has a key. 100%. <laughs> I need to go somewhere. And it, I literally like was up the road. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things to do. Like, it was such favorite funny, things to do. Honestly, I think I took like three naps in one day. Yeah. Like, it really was such a, a free. And he's like, but I don't understand. Like, you're always alone. And I'm like, there's a difference between not being next to someone and having yes. phone time. Yes. <laughs> My phone was on silent the whole time. Airplane yes. mode a couple times. Yes. Um, you know, not having access to me. Mm-hmm. Really just spending that time focused on myself. And yeah. one thing I've learned in the self-love journey is understanding that um, my love languages, I need to give that to myself. Oh, yeah. So if my love, oh, yeah. my top two love languages are quality time and um, acts of service. Mm. So looking for ways to spend quality time mm-hmm. with just me. Yeah. Looking for different acts of service that I can do for just me. For Even just if that's me. going to get my hair done, going to get my nails done, going to get massages, like yep. going to dinner, getting, you know, going to anything for you. you. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's, oh my gosh, going to a hotel by yourself is like beautiful hot spot and like yeah. I, yeah. I love to go to the the nice hotels where it feels yeah. like you're on like a little luxury vacation and you get your room service and you relax and then you go home and you do your chores and everything else but yeah. for those 48 hours it's, it's yeah. perfect I, and it's I mean so- there's cheaper options too like go for a walk by yourself go for a drive do anything you want that's by yourself and it's totally different than being in your home where you see like the dirty dishes and the laundry and the list of things else you need to do. <laughs> exactly. And then I like to look at self-care and equate it to like physical health. So mm-hmm. if you were to go to the gym once and work out for three hours, you're not really going to see those results. No. But mm-hmm. if you worked out 30 minutes, five days a week, yeah, you'll start to see those results. So the more consistent you are with your Mm self-care, the more you start to see those tangible results where you're like, yeah, I'm in a good place. Yes. Like I feel good. Um, And I've been doing really well with my depression lately. And it really ties to, I've been working out consistently. Mm, Yeah. And so the week that I was really down, I realized that it was raining all week. So I guess mm, yeah. back to knowing your trigger. It's like yeah. I'm sensitive to the weather. As long as I'm it's sunny outside, the weather. I'm good. Yeah. But a week full of rain mm. really impacted my mood, especially on the tail end of grief. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. really being intentional about your self-care. But the more I take days off, the more consistent I am with journaling, the more consistent mm-hmm. I am with therapy, um, all of the things that are included in my self-care routine, the more consistent I am with those the better I am overall. I think 100% that's the same way I am. Um, It's it's super easy for me to be like, okay, well, I'm not going to do it today because I felt good yesterday. But then I realized that that means tomorrow I probably won't feel as good. So it's just that consistency factor and building it up. For sure, for sure. So tell us a little bit about Happy Go Lucas and how it impacts the lives of others. Yes, so Happy Go Lucas is my little baby. And um, the first thing it did was publish my book. So it's the publisher behind with these words. Um, So I think that might be the most impactful thing it does. I'm not sure. Um, But the book is a a memoir about my life and about my experiences. And so when I published it through Happy Go Lucas, I also wanted that to be reflected in my business. Mm -hmm. Um, And so with my business, if you go on my website, you can see like my about me is very open about what I've gone through. Um, and then you go into the services and all the other information and it, it allows the clients to read through and really feel like they have a place there. So what we do at Happy Go Lucas is coaching sessions, organization sessions, and then career development. So coaching is either life coaching or career coaching, but, um, most of the life coaching focuses on moms and stepmoms, um, how they can help manage their families and blended families and co-parenting and raising kids and everything like that. 
and that's a whole yeah. whole beast in itself. So exactly. I really I really enjoy working with those women because I I know that when I started out dating a man with kids, I was like, who's here to what help? Do do? Like, <laughs> what's going on? Um, so that is super helpful for people, and it's it's just one of those hidden gems that you don't know you need until you need it. Um, and then the career development has been super super exciting during the Rony time um because yeah. everyone's changing careers everyone's like okay well now I can work from home like what does that look like in a different field um so I've had a lot of people doing interview prep um and doing resume help and things like that and it's been really rewarding beautiful beautiful so what would you say is your number one secret to success be patient mm. number one be patient it is not overnight. It is not over a month. Yeah. It is over years. Yeah. Um, and when you see someone who's successful, it looks like it happened overnight. Yeah. And it, I guarantee you it didn't. So just be patient. Um, and then that goes along with ask. Ask questions. Speak up for yourself. I think all three are built into one. Because um, as you're being patient, you can't just be silent and be like, oh, it's going to happen tomorrow. Like, no. While you're waiting, you have to ask someone what they did to get there. And you have to ask someone, can they help you get there? You're not going to do it by yourself. Absolutely. And I heard a, um, a TD Jake, I think it was TD Jake's where, quote, where he said, the start to humility is recognizing that you don't know the answer. Amen. Right and there. once you start there and just humble yourself a little bit mm -hmm. and be like, I don't know everything. Let me ask no. someone yeah. who does or has some experience or, yeah. um, and maybe not even an expert, but like yeah. just a different perspective. Just a different perspective. I think so many people today, especially those who are trying to build a business or their brand or their empire, whatever they want to call it, they, um, they want it to be a secret. Like they want to come out on top and be like, oh, look what I've been doing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're building something new, which means not even you know how to do it. Yeah. And so you need to reach out to someone who can help you and not be afraid of someone taking your stuff or taking control or whatever. You have to just really trust God that if this is your plan and this is your purpose, then yeah. you can walk in it and you can ask for help. Absolutely. So what final thoughts do you have for the audience? Final thoughts? I would just say listen to this podcast two or three times, you know, like listen to all the people who are chasing their dreams and who are following their dreams. And then listen to this specific episode about mental health. It is yes. so, so important. And you can't be successful in anything if you're not healthy mentally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. This has been such a great conversation. I love being able to discuss mental health because it's definitely a passion of mine. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us. Where can people find you? Definitely. So check out my Instagram. It's at Teresa X and Lucas, um, just my full name. And then you can find me on Amazon author page, Goodreads author page, and www.happygolucas.com. Awesome. Well, thank you for being a part of the Chasing Dreams podcast and sharing your dreams a little bit. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And we'll see you next week, guys.